Okay, hello, welcome to Heroes of Might and Magic 3 Horn of the Abyss, where we are going to be beginning a new random map playthrough as the Factory Faction, which is the second faction added to Horn of the Abyss, only recently added at the time of recording. Factory is a really interesting faction, pretty much every unit this faction has has some kind of unique ability never seen in the game before. I do have a separate video going over the various features of Factory, but in this particular series we're going to be playing through a map and actually seeing those features and creatures in action. If you would like to watch the full series, I will leave a link to the playlist in the description where you will be able to find all episodes. So we're going to play a random map, huge size, 8 players, and we're also going to set things up in a slightly unconventional way. We're going to have one team of 3 players together, and the reason we are doing that is because we're going to see how the other faction, added by Horn of the Abyss, compares. So we're going to have, I guess we'll call them the Cove Triplets. They are going to be probably our main opponents in this particular map. We're also going to have one other factory opponent, which I guess we'll have as the, uh, the TAM player. So that will be to see how the AI actually handles playing factory themselves. We are going to play as Orange Factory. I'll come back to Hero Choice in a moment. And for our three remaining opponents, we're going to go with Inferno as the kind of arch rivals of factory in their campaign. Uh, we're going to go with Castle as the... I guess generically good faction from the original game, and we're going to go with Necropolis as just an interesting faction in general to go up against. So in terms of our hero choices, we have lots of interesting choices. The obvious choice is always going to be Jury, uh, the armor specialist with basic offense, basic armor, starting skills. Really good hero, really good on a large sized map, keeps getting better and better, but I kind of feel like she's, she's kind of the Mary Sue of the factory lineup. She's so flawless that it almost feels like a boring choice. So we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to go instead with Rathmont. Rathmont has the Frenzy specialty, which means it's more effective on lower tier creatures. Uh, but also, perhaps more usefully and importantly, he does start off with the Frenzy spell, uh, which does have a few quite interesting applications with this town, which we will probably see as we go through. So let's pick Rathmont. He starts off with Wisdom and Intelligence, which means he is missing... Uh, a lot of very useful skills that Factory does like to have, and I'm not even sure if I would ideally have intelligence at all. But we're going to see how it goes. Uh, for our starting resource, we are playing on impossible difficulty. For our starting resource, we're just going to go with gold, because gold is almost certainly going to be short. I can't remember if I mentioned it, but we will be playing with underground as well, so the map should go on for some time. And yeah, like I said, do check out the playlist link, because this is definitely going to last for more than one episode. Okay, here is our starting zone, so we can see that we've got Gravel Pass, which is going to uh, accelerate the accelerate the aggressive side of the game a little bit. Okay, let's take a step out of our town. We've bought everything we can. 31 Halflings, not bad to kick us off. Uh, we can see we don't appear to be closed in, which is always a good start. Lots of Nymphs there. That should be very beatable. In fact, I think we can literally just launch straight into our first battle here. I think it makes sense to do so. So, some losses expected. Unfortunately, they do start off with 14 Oceanids, but strangely, they come straight forward, which will make them a lot easier to handle. Okay, so this unit is probably not going to survive, I guess. It depends what we do with them. Nymphs come forward too. We can go for a full powered shot on the Oceanids, and we immediately clear them out. The rest of our units will move up to block. Armadillos, I think, should be able to just about survive a hit from 14 nymphs. Move these guys up too, and uh, unfortunately the, the mechanic is probably doomed. I will try to move her out of the way. She is safe for at least this round. We're going to wait. See if they come forward, but it looks like they're going to be a bit too smart. Nope, first stack does come forward, but they're still uh, not in full range. Okay, let's go for these, because they've not moved yet. They are actually the bigger threat. So they come towards us, we are just going to try to move out of their range, it's not really going to work. Might be better off going defensive, but we can at least move out of the way of the stack of 14. So we'll see if we can survive a hit from 5. We should actually be okay, and in fact we get morale. So that is perfect. This unit will wait, this unit will defend. This guy can go for the attack if he wants to wipe out the 5, but I don't think it makes sense to. It probably does make sense to go for the nymphs, although they don't get morale, they shouldn't threaten us too much. So this unit comes up for the attack, I'm guessing... The other stack of 14 won't bother. I'm going to move this stack out. Is that a mistake? So the stack of 14 does move before our halflings next round. 
I think the big question is, will they move next? Our stack of five could go out, finish off the nymphs. I'm going to defend. This stack does come closer, so we can go for a full powered shot. We take them out and we get morale. Okay, so perfect. No losses on the first fight. That's great to see. We also get access to wood, which we probably do need, although... Gold is perhaps more urgent. Let's go for the extra experience. For each level 2, we do get access to basic estates, which is not what we want on the main hero. Uh, advanced intelligence to increase our normal spell points by 35% is going to be good. Let's go for gold here as well. 1,700 gold is not enough to pick up our second hero, which will be Victoria. Not the best of secondary heroes for this town. Does come with some extra units though, so we will be going for her at some point. Uh, town Hall is another thing worth going for pretty soon, but we've done all we can for this turn. Let's end the turn there. Also very glad to be starting off actually in the Wasteland terrain. Let's make things a lot easier. A little bit more wood just there. Also a level 1 spell. Let's go for it. Stone skin, not too great, but not too terrible. Bit of extra wood. We could go towards this. We can't actually reach. Let's make sure we grab the gold. 2,700 gold. Always a slightly difficult choice between the Town Hall and an extra hero, but I think in this case... Extra hero. The map does seem fairly open. Sure, we can make use of that. Can't afford an extra mechanic. Okay, so we're going to send Victoria out. She can also go to the southeast where she can grab a sawmill. If we do that, we're missing the opportunity to pass some units over to Rathmont. So what we could do instead is we could try and save up for Kaut, who's going to come with a few water elementals. Pretty weak starting force, not that useful. Uh, but she's more of a useful choice to go out and scout. I think this hero... We'd probably rather take the extra units, because yeah, a Horde of Walking Dead should be okay, but I get the sense that we might want those extra halflings. Okay, so that does stop us from building a new building, but that's fine. Let's end the turn there. Let's take a step forward, pass all of these units across. We'll leave ourselves with one mechanic because they have 6 speed, which means they're the best choice for giving us extra movement points at this stage. Uh, Rathwant will take a step onto this, which will reveal a bit more of the map. So we've got the Angel Wings just there. That's potentially a powerful thing to go for. Lots of Earth Elementals blocking the way through. We can see Blue already, the Castle player. is in a zone not too far from us. Could potentially reach them underground. We've also got a Gantry there. So I had started off this series pretty convinced I was going to go down the road of the Serpentarium because I think Rathmont in particular, with his Frenzy spell, which is going to drop our defense to zero, does work really well with the Crimson Coatles, the final tier creature. However, if we can get the extra growth from the Gantry, which is not even that heavily defended, that seems like the right choice. And this map is looking like a fairly reasonable start. The defenders aren't too tough. A Horde of Walking Dead I feel we can probably beat, we're just going to swap a couple of these units around. So let's put the Armadillos on the bottom, go for the fight with these. Uh, we could try to... ...give them the run around. These guys have 5 speed, their fastest creatures have 4 speed. Yeah, I guess we should probably go forward with one Armadillo. See if we can bait them. Being undead they also can't get morale. Which always helps. I'm going to go straight forward, see if we can drag them to the bottom. It does work with the zombies. Walking Dead also fall for the trap. Can't go for a full powered shot yet. These guys have 24 shots. Wow, okay, so we're pretty safe. These go defensive. These wait. rest of these stacks stay defensive. This stack is actually still safe this round, so we wait. We drag them closer. Stack of 14 at the top is, I think, an obvious choice to attack. Okay, so these guys next. They can get a little bit closer to us. I think we move to this spot just here. These go for this stack. Do a nice full-powered shot. Don't do quite as much as I would have hoped. It's tempting to wait so we can shoot the zombies, but I will go for these. Then let's wait with all of these stacks. Four armadillos should be able to take on two walking dead. These guys wait too. Zombies come closer. Okay, let's go for this. So we drop them down to one. If we go for this, we can finish them off. Could potentially send out the mechanics as well. 
these guys move up. So we should get two moves with these before any of these stacks can move. I think we go up to this position. These guys can go down to attack zombies. One to three kills though, that's not really worthwhile. I think we wait. These can go for a full powered shot on this stack, so let's do that. These guys wait too. And this stack can safely move up to here. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to bait them. So we did bait the Walking Dead. Looks like we baited all three stacks of Walking Dead. That's great. Uh, these guys are going to start going back. These guys don't have too much to do. These to defend. If we go for this, one to three kills, we'll get hit back. Should be able to take the hit though. I'm going to actually go for this. So 8 hit points left. I think we don't take the extra retaliation, we go back. These go for this stack for the full powered attack. These go for the hit instead, 23 hit points left. None of the other stacks can reach us. These go in for the block. These defend, and this stack. We're going to see if we can continue to bait them in the wrong direction. Still mostly works. Two stacks do get dragged away. These guys will wait. These go for this on the stack that is chasing us down. These stacks can't reach us if we go for this. Continue trying to bait. At this point, wasn't sure it would work, but we do bait the stack of 14 and the stack of 7 away, so that's great. These can't do too much this round. This stack waits at the start of the next round. We finish these off. Kill these off as well. These defend. And this stack can still get away. So at this point, stack of 14, still baited. Stack of 7 does actually come towards us. Okay, rest of these stacks can't really do too much. At this point, we are pretty safe just to drag them towards us. Let's see what they do. Still try to chase us down, that's fine. Uh, we still have 16 shots left to go. Halflings, get a lot more shots than I thought. Okay, that was much more painless than expected. We go for the attack. Let's wait. Defend with the rest of the stacks. These guys drag them towards us. Don't mind if they come towards us at this point, we should be very safe. Do finish them off, no losses, a thousand experience, and we do get basic earth magic, which is almost certainly going to be really useful. Go for the learning stone as well, we do level up once again, we're going to go straight for advanced earth magic. Could grab the campfire as well, I guess we should. Okay, next fight, lots of gnolls. Should be easier in theory, but they are faster. Let's just go for it. So a few losses expected. Same thing again, we're just going to go defensive. This time though, normal Marauders can match our speed. So we don't want to mess around. Bring them towards us. Okay, no morale. Let's just go for the stronger stack. Can actually finish them off in two rounds, that's good to know. I still think we wait. These stacks will defend. So could a stack of 9 kill us? 4 attack, we have 15 defense, we should be okay. So we go for this, we do finish that stack off, this stack waits. And in fact I uh, miscounted the turn, so we do get another turn, perfect. Okay, so we're now going to take the slower units off of Rathmon. And let's just grab this for him. And let's continue to push to the east. Then going back to the town, 1,700, there's not too much we can do with that. Uh, we could save our gold, try and save up for the town hall, but the marketplace is almost certainly going to be wanted at some point, so let's go for that. Let's end the turn there. Blue is... not looking too scary. I'm not bothered about that. We're not strong enough to go for the gantry. Lots of gremlins for a level 2 spell. So gremlins can start off the stack of master gremlins, which is the big risk. So what I think we want to do is we want to put the mechanics in the middle as our fastest units, spread the rest out, and there is a chance we take some losses here. 
If they start off with Master Gremlins, there's nothing we can do. As actually they don't. So that works really well. Same setup as before. Okay, two stacks of 25 come towards us. I don't think we need to try and run them around. Let's go for this. These guys come up. Stack of 13 shambles closer. We move these up to defend. These go up as well, I think. And this stack still can't reach us. If they get morale, we might lose one armadillo. But that should be it. Okay, next round begins. We're going to wait with these. These defend. All of these stacks defend. These guys move away. Go for the attack. Finish them off. No losses. And then we go for this. Protection from air. Okay, that could be useful. Not for a long time, though. So lots of Harpy Hags are guarding a level 3 spell. Lots of Walking Dead likewise. That's an easy fight to do. I think we want to go through this, the Men of the Sea. But... Are we actually strong enough to take on a pack of automatons? I feel like if they didn't detonate, we would, but in my experience, AI does tend to activate detonation. So automatons, for those who don't know, they will explode when their stack gets destroyed. Typically does around 75 damage if there's one in the stack. Slightly more if there are more. I don't think we get ahead of ourselves. I think we go to the east instead. Southeast. Maybe start moving back. We also move towards the imps, albedeers. Crystal is a really important resource for this faction. Several green dragons, lots of good stuff to the west. That's going to be worth going towards. Okay, I still think we go for the walking dead. It should be an easy fight, should give us a good amount of experience. Need to rejig these units. These go through as bait. And yeah, AI once again falls for it. Okay, let's just go for the attack on the nearest stack. These guys move up. Okay, Walking Dead continue to take the bait. There should be nothing in range. So we'll just attack the strongest stack we can. Allow them closer. I still think these aren't in range. I think we do continue to pull them towards us. So these things have really low damage potential. Like we have 3 to 5 as a tier 3 creature, they have 2 to 3. Kind of similar, quite a tanky unit, but quite slow and quite low damage. Okay, let's just defend. And go for a full power shot on these, we do finish them off, these defend. Should be pretty safe here. Still defend. Nothing in range. Let's go for these. These two stacks come closer. Defend with these, move these up, and we should be pretty safe at this point. So we finish that stack off. Finish. Nope, don't quite finish that stack off, but no way to Walking Dead break through us. Kill those two. No losses. And let's see what we get. Fireball. Okay, that's our first damaging spell. Back to the town. We can go for the ranch if we want to. So the ranch does lead us towards the Serpentarium, whereas Manufactory and Watchtower lead us towards the Gantry. Gantry is probably not happening until, at best, end of week two, perhaps. So Manufactory requires the Blacksmith. Blacksmith also required for the Town Hall. Uh, town Hall is something we should go for pretty soon, but we do need to find some more gold. How would we do that? So lots of Oceanids should be doable. Perhaps we just move in that direction. We're going to pick up the Crystal. As I said, super important for this faction. Uh, to break through there, we have to take on a pack of Cerberi, which could be pretty dangerous. It does get us the Helm of Chaos. A bit of extra knowledge. Okay, I think we go back to the town, and I think we do go for the Blacksmith, on the assumption that at some point we can get a good boost of gold. We need to find the Ore Pit as well, which I'm guessing is to the southwest. I'm going to actually leave Rathmont there and prioritize going southwest. End the turn there. 
So blue not looking too dangerous. If we take on a pack of Cerberi, this fight I suspect will result in losses. Also really dangerous because they attack multiple stacks at once. Still tempting. They're level 3 creatures, we do have okay spells, including Frenzy, which we might need. We'll try it. So victory is expected, 15 in total. Mostly losses to the mechanics. We do get to move before they do, so don't have to worry about morale too much. This stack I think waits. I think they've already waited, yeah, because they're way faster than us. So AI is trying its best to be as smart as it can be. Stone skin could be interesting. Okay, we're going to be forced to go for the attack, but I think... Well, if we go for Frenzy, it's going to last for two rounds, which isn't amazing. We probably don't go for it yet. Stone skin instead perhaps could be good. We will wait, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't make a difference. Actually, this doesn't work because of this awkwardly shaped crack. Uh, the mechanics I should have moved immediately. That was a mistake. So I'm going to have to put the mechanics in harm's way. That's kind of the only thing we can do. So these have 8 speed. They can get pretty close to us. I think we'll try to hold them in place. With these two stacks. Stop them coming towards us. These will defend... And we are going to be forced to attack. So this stack will come towards us first. Okay, I think we probably stone skin these. They will attack both the armadillos and the mechanics at once. But hopefully they do that with a stack of four. Hmm. Just going to have to go for it. So we do attack that stack. We only take one out. I think we do go stone skin on these, although it doesn't make sense to this round. Actually, they do move before us next round as well, so that's okay. Let's make it as awkward as possible for the stack of four to reach us. Okay, it looks like they have chosen to attack us with a stack of four regardless. Not too much we can do about that. Actually, no, they multi-attack us with that stack instead. They do get morale, so they take out two armadillos at once. That is not good for us. Okay, gonna be forced to go defensive here for sure. And this is probably the turn. We go for Frenzy. So that's increased our attack to 10, which is not very much. Yeah, I guess we drop defense by 2, so that's plus 2 attack. Normally it would make a bigger difference, but these unfortunately do a very low defense. There's not much to gain. Okay, so what we could do is we could move the armadillos down as the blockers and still attack with these. That does expose the halflings to be attacked themselves. But I think we still do it. Does that work though, or do these just come through? So, these can reach... They can't actually reach this stack if we stay in place. If we attack from here, these retaliate, but they should only have one left. So we can take that. Then we go for this with our frenzied attack. Two to four kills. I doubt we'll get four. We do get three. If we go down for this attack, we can finish them off. These two stacks can get pretty close regardless. In fact, it seems to make sense. We can stay out of their range. That'd be perfect. We'll let the stack of one come through. That's actually fine. I'll see how that goes. These will attempt to bait them away. So stack of one does go for that. Stack of other stack of one can only attack one stack at a time. Because we don't retaliate, I think we just stay as we are. These stacks can't reach us without morale. Okay, so 21 hit points left. I doubt four armadillos can kill them. We should just go for the attack. Then we can go for a full powered attack on these. Let's do that. We finish them off. These are guaranteed to kill these off. Let's do it. And let's wait. Zero to two kills if we go for this. Does that make sense, or should we wait? If we wait, I imagine they just come forward. In fact, they must have waited already. From the turn order. Okay, 
These move up to defend. Hopefully can take an attack from one of these. We do take a loss. Zero to one kills if we go for this, so we defend instead. Go for it with these. A few losses, nothing too terrible. Basic air magic I would normally say yes to. But I also, with this hero being the frenzy specialist, I do want to go for fire magic. Basic air magic though is really good. We should be offered it again. I'm going to go for intelligence for now. Grab the extra knowledge. Go for the sawmill. And let's see what we can scout. So if we go back to the town, 1,200 gold to spend. Could pick up some more mechanics. I think we try to save our gold instead. And let's see if we can find some more gold. So we can go through. But then we're stopped by the ocean heads. Okay, fine. Okay, so Rathmon is going to take a couple of steps through. In fact, that's the wrong hero, never mind. Rathmon takes a step through. Can we reach these this turn? We can. Do we want to take on a Horde of Gnolls? We could do it. I think this is in our favour pretty massively. We should take probably a few losses. Yeah, there are quite a few of them. But we are faster on this terrain. So we can bait them in. So these are 4 speed. We have 5 speed on these, 7 speed on these. I'm gonna wait with these. Okay, bottom 3 stacks look like they are going for our mechanics. I'm gonna move these up to defend as well. Okay, nothing in range, that sucks. Just gotta do whatever damage we can. So these will go forward as bait. These defend. So next round is started. These wait. These wait as well. These all defend. Let's kill these off. And try and bait these away. Could also try to bait the stack of nine away because I feel like nine nulls could maybe get a kill. So this stack this time round is going to wait. These guys... Let's see where we can go. So best spot I think is here. There is a chance we pull the bottom three stacks towards us. Ah, I don't know if that made sense, because we can just kill these off. I'd rather not take the hit. They might still go for the bait. I'm going to move these out just in case. Okay. Looks like, yep, all three do take the bait, so that does work out. Let's go up to block once again. Please defend, and let's wait. Gonna pull them slightly closer towards us. This stack waits, these guys defend. All three stacks come towards us, but actually AI pretty smart there. Stays out of range. Forced to go for this attack. Next round begins. Not many safe places we can go. I'm gonna take a small step back, but at this point, doesn't really make much difference. These defend. These, I think, should move out. These move up to block. Just in case they get morale. Okay, so we finish these off. These can go forward, but they can't quite reach, so let's just take. Well, we could go for the attack. I feel like that would work. First chance to show off the breath attack. Four to seven kills. We should be able to take the retaliation. Then we go for this. There is a chance we take a loss. These four. So that was probably not the right move. I have to go for this. So we can get 0 to 1 kills with this, let's just go for it, let's see if we can drop the numbers just enough to protect our mechanics. These can't actually reach, these can't either. Okay, gotta go slightly forward in case we get morale, but it's not in our favour. Hopefully take the hit, nope, and uh, we do actually friendly fire a bit there too, but no losses. Okay, so the one loss, that's okay. Victoria goes towards this. Rathmon, we'll see what this is. Destroy Undead. We do have one Necromancer opponent, so that could be good. 
1200 gold, we've already got the blacksmith, we do need the mage guild, that's probably the next thing to go for, we also need the ore pit. Uh, if we go for the ranch, it depends how much gold we get next turn, whether that's worth it, I think it probably is. So there's prospector, bit of gold from the treasure chest, bit of gold potentially from the hobgoblins. It's not a lot, but I think we just go for it. Make sure we do something this turn, as blue is. Continuing to expand. Okay, so Oceanids. Hobgoblins might get a few kills. I think we still go for this, so fair few losses expected here. They do get to move next, but looks like they'll choose to wait. So we're 7 speed, they are 7 speed as well. It's not really safe to bait, but... We'll see what we can do if we go forward. I think we still wait first. So most of the stacks do move towards the bottom, which is great. One stack does get morale, so we're going to lose, lose our first unit there. But they are in full range, so let's take them out. Doesn't quite work. Okay, these go up for the block. So, stack of one armadillo. I'm not sure that would take the hit from these, probably not. So these are next to move, I think we go forward with these just to try and keep the hobgoblins as far away as we can. We do actually bait those down. This stack waits. Stack of 21 does not manage to kill us off in the first round, next stack does. Another stack of 21 comes up, this stack should be killed off by retaliation, then we go for these, don't quite finish them off. Still stay defensive, we'll probably lose one armadillo here. We can take a step out if we want to, but stack of 20 does move before our mechanics next round. So with that being the case, better off just holding our position, going defensive. They come up towards us, we're just going to wait with this stack. We will probably lose at least one armadillo pretty soon. Perhaps not this round. Do get our luck, the halflings are guaranteed to have good luck. go for the attack on these and if we take a step out with this stack I don't think nine mechanics do enough damage for this to be worthwhile so I think we stay defensive we'll take a loss stack of one probably does attack us but that's fine we don't take a loss to that we can go for these and we can hopefully finish these off okay loss is not too bad just grab this bit of extra crystal is perfect Going to be forced to spread out our mechanics, but that's fine. Uh, lots of ocean heads. Hopefully they won't form too many stacks. Let's grab the wood. Let's grab this too. Grab the resources. Six mercury. Go for this fight. Few losses expecting. Nothing too bad. So two stacks of ocean heads. Both have chosen to wait. Not much point trying to bait them. I think we just move up. Should have perhaps blocked off the stack of six in hindsight. But stack of one goes for those. And stack of 15 goes for those. Okay, so we should be fine. Full powered shot. We finish them off. Just the one loss. And we can now grab the experience. If we end the turn on top of this and then dig next turn, it costs us a turn, but we should get a few resources. I still think probably best to do that with someone else. Let's grab the 2000 gold. Grab the 5 Sulfur, I was hoping for gold there, which is a thing that can happen, but never mind. Yeah, like I said, we can't reach this this turn, but that's fine. Let's go back to the town, we have 3,300 gold. It is day 6, so there is an argument for going for one more hero, but in this case... I think we just go Town Hall. Make sure the economy's got going. Start going west with Victoria, end the turn there. And uh, blue did not move. Which I guess is because Cuthbert is just a basic basic scout hero, not really going to make too much difference. Okay, we have found the ore pit. It's guarded by a horde of gremlins, which again, can be a dangerous fight in some situations. Victoria should definitely end the turn on top of this, I think. Although we won't benefit from it till next turn. 
Rathmon should go for the ore. And what we could do is we could buy the bank, but I think probably Citadel would be preferable. Increase the halfling growth. Best dwelling we can go for would be the catacombs. And then we're pretty close actually to getting the Serpentarium, which I haven't ruled out as the first choice. We don't need the gantry approach. So automatons is also doable once we get the extra ore, that should probably also be seriously considered. This is very affordable though. Yeah, so this one requires the manufactory, so if we just want a stack of sandworms to get us going next week, that's very doable. Okay, once again we're going to put these in the middle. These two will go up top. Hopefully no Master Gremlins, I doubt we get so lucky twice, we actually do, okay. Okay, I'm going to send these forward. They do take the bait. Please move up. Don't really need to be too careful here, this is a pretty straightforward fight. We'll probably just drag them towards us. Yep, so we'll pull them towards us. They do start to move towards us with some other stacks. Neither of these two are able to be hit for full strength, but I still think we go for the strongest stack of the three. These units wait. Wait with these two, these defend, these move up. Okay, now we kill these off, these defend, these go for this. 3 to 6 kills, so we won't finish them off, but that's fine. Do some more damage with these. <laughs> Don't go for the friendly fire. Okay, these finish these off. These defend, these shoot. No losses. Not very much experience, but we will take the extra ore. And... Six is not really that great. I think we go for this pile as well, rather than leave that to a scout. 20 to 49 leprechauns gets us access to some gold. Probably should take that risk. So it's day seven. Should build something this turn. Catacombs actually still not affordable, and I'm not sure why. I guess we need uh, 3,000 gold. I figured we'd get some gold, but of course we don't. So that doesn't work. Citadel, likewise, requires more gold. Bank does give us gold, but it also uses up our build turn, so it's not the right one to go for. The pen, it's a weird choice for a building. It shouldn't really be a priority, but with it being day 7, and I don't want to waste all my resources on trade, I actually think it's the best thing we can do. It's fine to have a slow week on Impossible. Let's end the turn there. Okay, week of the war unicorn. So a new week begins, which means we get access to Todd, who starts off with five automatons, a really nice hero, and also Tarek, who's not bad at all. Okay, so Victoria is going to use her turn to dig, which will drop her morale, but we get 4,000 gold for that really powerful map object, the grave. Scales of the Greater Basilisk. Plus three spell power, that's really nice for Rathmont, if we bring him back. But I think we stay aggressive. Okay, so we can definitely justify going for Todd. Whether we go for Catacombs next, or perhaps Manufactory, double down on his automatons. Could also go towards City Hall. Let's see what Rathmont can do. I'm pretty sure we can take this fight. With a few losses. Okay, game thinks it's going to be tough. We'll see how it goes. Still just have the two spell power. So these are six speed, these are five speed, so we can wait first round. That's going to help. These can also go forward. Should be fine to do that as bait. These guys wait, these guys move up. Leprechauns do fall for it. Top stack I think will come towards us. No, they actually don't. Okay, I'm not sure how I feel about that because I would have liked to do full damage against those. I'm just going to go for this stack. 
Okay, now we pull them towards us some more. We can actually line them up behind this crack, make it really hard for them to break through, but... I feel like... We shouldn't need to take many losses regardless. Okay, we'll let them come closer. We're gonna take one step down with these, although in fact that puts us in range, so let's go defensive. Okay, free to attack. We can go for a full powered attack on these, which is great. Let's do that. These defend. No stack can reach us if we go up to this. And let's wait. These defend. These defend as well. Full powered shot on these. Finish them off. This stack waits. This stack defends. This stack steps out, creates some space. Stack of 5 there can reach us, but there's not much we can do, let's just go defensive. Kill that stack off. Stack of 6 can't reach us, these defend. Okay, what we need to do is I think we need to move these out of the way. Send these through to attack. Just check we still move first, which of course we do. So these defend, these move before the leprechauns, finish them off, no losses, and we do get that basic fire magic, which is... Like I said, not a skill I'd usually go for, not a skill I'd really recommend, but just because he's our specialist, I feel like it's got to be done. I might regret that later when I inevitably miss out on offense or armor. Tactics are also really good for this town. Logistics, of course. Probably going to regret that later, but I'm embracing the novelty of fire magic. If we get berserk, it'll be worth it. It's a really good, really good spell with expert fire magic. Infernal Troglodytes, this should be pretty safe to go for. It's a bit of a dead end, but we do want those crystals. So we are faster with these stacks. Which means we can bait them. Should be fine to do so. Okay, that stack does not fall for it. The rest of the stacks do. Not quite sure if this stack's in range. We do lose our bait to the morale. That can happen. This is the biggest threat. Uh, we actually don't do as much to those as I hoped. But they can't reach us this round. Gonna wait. Let them come closer. Okay, I think... I think we take a step down. So 9 to 16 kills, we are somewhat wasting our attack if we go for this, but they can kill off a mechanic. I'm less worried about losing armadillos to the mechanics, so we kill those off. These wait. No, they defend. These defend. These take a step out. Then they defend. These wait. Next round has begun. Go for this stack. We do finish them off in one round. Stack of 17 can't reach us. These defend. This stack can reach us. Does manage to kill us off. Not actually worth involving these mechanics. I think we stay defensive. Do we form ranks? I think we do. Next round begins, we wait. Go for this stack. Do kill them off. This stack can reach us. Can reach us. Kills off a mechanic. These defend. These defend as well. These defend. And we do get to move first with our halflings. So we go for this attack. We kill them off. A few losses, but hopefully worth it in the end. Grab the sulfur. Move towards the crystal. And we do have Todd to move out if we want to. He can go for the imps, but there are quite a few of them. Not sure we want to do that just yet. What would be really interesting is if we threw in the automatons against the dreadnoughts. So there'll be three dreadnoughts, which is 600 hit points. We can do 75 damage with each stack of automatons. Is that enough? So let's assume we can apply five stacks just as straight up bait. So automatons should be faster than dreadnoughts by default, which means we have the initiative. So it's five times 70, which is 350. That does really work, but is it worth sacrificing all those automatons or should we try to win the normal way? Upgraded Halfling Adobe is interesting. The Manufactory shouldn't in theory be necessary for this. The bank this turn allows us to buy everything out. 
but it shouldn't be too expensive regardless. Interesting idea. Not sure it's worth the hit, but then again... Ultimately, this is a level 7 dwelling. It gets us a Dreadnought. Could also do some repair with the mechanics to bring back at least one automaton. But the, the mechanics are slower. Pretty sure they're slower than the Dreadnoughts. Possibly they speed tie. Uh, do I have to decide that now? I think unfortunately I do. Everyone else has moved. I could buy an extra hero as a scout or something, but I mean, Terek, he's got a few units. It's not really worth it. We... Uh, day one is a perfect time to buy the bank, get that loan for five days, have to pay it back, but we are definitely able to buy out everything we can, although if we just buy all of this stuff, that's 600 gold. Don't think we care to spend three grand on armadillos. And yet... That would work. Also, Mage Girl level 1. This guy does start off with a spellbook. Does start off with shield. We're gonna want the Mage Guild. Manufactory, of course it's tempting. And we want to move towards the Gantry. How could we do that? So we need 20 crystal. Can we do that this week? There's some crystal there. Some crystal there. We'll be pretty close. Crystal up there too. Fair bit of crystal lying around, nothing sustainable, no crystal cavern. Manufactory into watchtower, this one requires lots of gold, so we still need lots and lots of gold, which we don't have the city hall. I don't know, I don't think we plan for the gantry yet, I don't know if that makes sense. Serpentarium's much more affordable this week, but the problem is we don't get the extra growth from the gantry. Okay, one thing I do know is we're definitely buying these. So 34 of these should be able to make up for the damage not done by the automatons. If we go for these, that's 2,200. I guess we go for the bank. Go for the bank, we accept the loan, that temporarily boosts us up to 5,300. We're going to buy all of these, and we have just enough to buy all of these as well. So 21 armadillos, decent power stack. We spread these over 4 stacks, which is less than I wanted, but probably still works for us. Uh, day one, in theory, it's not a rush to get the gantry, but the gantry should take us, should help us take a fight with some of these weaker creatures. Plus, it's a good map objective. The horde of air elementals, I'd not really thought about too much. What we could do instead is we could go towards Rathmont, give him the extra units. But for now, I think this is not a big objective to do right now. We probably go for the imps instead, and we probably bring these together. Spread these out. Do we need the gold this round? We don't, because we've already built. So we're going to enjoy the luxury of going to this, getting the extra level. Basic Scholar, I don't think we bother. Let's just go for Wisdom. Uh, do we want Stone Skin? I don't think we care too much. So Campfire and Treasure Chest there, that's pretty good. And we can then focus Victoria on moving around to the east instead of the west. Is this worth doing? The thing is, our halflings aren't actually that powerful. But whatever, we'll see how it goes. So, four crystal there. We already have been to the Star Axis. We probably do want to go to the School of War, but because we've taken the loan, we're only earning uh, 500 gold per turn. Not really enough. Okay, I think we just have to go for this. We do have tactics, which is actually really handy. So what we'll do is we'll put these out in front. We can always repair them if they get damaged. Stack of 18 up here, I suspect they probably won't want to attack that. They have 5 speed, we have also 5 speed. Okay, one stack up there. These move up as well. And these probably can't bait, but we will try. I'm willing to take that loss if they go towards those, that's completely fine. Wait with as many stacks as possible. I think they are going towards our armadillo bait. Bell option shield could keep us alive. I think we probably just go fully defensive. Not much to be gained from rushing in. Can go for the full powered attack on these. We take a chunk of them out, but not that many. If we go forward and go for this, 13 kills guaranteed. Doesn't make sense to do that. Just defend, and then wait. Then we go for this. 
Let me wait. See if they come slightly closer. They do. So we can finish these off. This stack can't then reach us. Do get morale so we can go back. Let's do that. These guys defend. These defend also. Next round begins. We wait. We wait with this stack too. We go for the attack on these. Please wait. They can't reach any of our stacks, so we go defensive. Come slightly closer. These defend. These defend. These can go for this. 13 kills. If we do that, we could then bring in the mechanics to repair. So they have 7 speeds. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. They can reach. So we should be safe to do this because of repair. We don't actually take a loss. We still go for this, so we do take a loss in response, but now we can show off the repair mechanic. From the mechanics. We get our automaton repaired, we finish them off. We go for the 1500 gold, the 400 gold there, and we can move towards the obelisk. Do we go for the halberdiers as well? So I do want this by the end of the week, but I think we do that with Rathmon. Okay, so 2400 gold, we do want to invest in this town. Probably whatever's cheap in terms of gold costs that we definitely want long term. Uh, Mage Guild we need for the City Hall. So I think we do go for that. We do want to spend a thousand gold on some attack. Victoria should end the turn on this. That just makes sense. So I think Todd does go for this. Then if we go closer to Victoria, we can indeed get through. So we go as close as we can to Victoria. Victoria takes the extra units. Passes this across. No, we keep that, for sure. Victoria goes and ends the turn on this. Do we go for Bloodlust? We've already got it, of course. This is the hero we check that out with. Okay, we end the turn on that. Then Rathmon goes up towards this. Pay a thousand gold for plus one attack. Okay, then we are slightly short of affording the Mage Guild, but in this case, I think we can justify trading two wood. Get that in the bag. So our level one spells, we've got Magic Area, we've got Slow. We do have Earth Magic already, so that's great. Rathmon cannot pick up the units this turn, but that's fine. Victoria stays in place, all of our gold has been spent, we end the turn there. No sign of movement from Blue. Okay, so at this point Todd has no units, which means we have to ignore the Halberdiers for now, which is okay. We get our first look at the factory puzzle map. Okay, stone skin just up there, Victoria. Should of course dig. Why I have the dragon, 1500 gold, much more disappointing than the other, but that's fine. Okay, let's move up. Let's grab the units. We'll give up one automaton for the extra speed. And we'll take all of the artifacts, so we're up to pretty decent stats. Plus one attack and defense from there, plus three spell power from this. So we're already a pretty good spellcaster. Uh, no sign of any fights we can take this turn. So actually, probably makes more sense to give up the units. Uh, we can send Todd through to do that, but Todd I think should scout. Bloodlust? Because we have fire magic, we could go for mass bloodlust but I don't really care that much. Did we get any fire skills here? No, we didn't. Okay, Todd just moves down. Lots of imps there. If we take the units, we can take that fight pretty easily, but I don't think we care that much about Sulphur. Let's just grab the ore. Grab Bloodlust with this. If we had gone for Scholar, we could have passed that across, but never mind, it's fine. And uh, I don't think it's worth taking the slower units just to get a few extra movement points next turn. Okay, 2,000 gold we can spend if we want to. Manufactory we do want. Uh, mana generator's not worth going for yet. Until we're threatened, pretty much. Manufactory, Serpentarium requires the catacombs. Should we continue to save for the catacombs or just build up our creature production as much as possible? I'm going to go for the creature production. I'm going to move Rathmon up in this direction where we could probably take the fight with these pretty soon. We probably do want the extra spells. So we'd have to stop off in the town. Let's go in that direction. End the turn there. No sign of any movement. 
Okay, so 500 gold, there's not a lot we can do with that, but what we can do is... We can go up to this. Sulfur once again. Crystal from that, that's good. So 18 crystal, we're good for crystal. But... Not much in the way of gold. Still paying off the loan. Okay. I'm assuming this is still worth the visit. If we go up this way instead... Harpy Hag fight... Not very nice. Don't really want to do that. Okay, so gold is going to be a problem. We can't build this turn. Unless we trade, but it's not worth doing that. Okay, I still think we go back. We'll grab ourselves one extra automaton. We'll grab the spells just in case they make a difference. The fight with the air elementals will not be nice because they could start off with... Storm elementals. Which almost certainly results in losses, either to the Halflings or to the Automatons. Neither of which we want. But we can bring Victoria up. And she can grab some more Automatons if we need them. Although we probably want to go for gold instead. Lots of Automatons there, so they have actually grown over the previous week. And we can now see there are probably about 20 of them, or just above. That's not going to be a nice fight to take. I don't think we take that trap. Okay, what else can we do? If we go west, not really too much to achieve yet. I think we've got to go towards the gantry and just see how it goes. That's our objective. Victoria works her way around. Ends the turn in the town. Okay, next round begins. Do we go straight for the extra automaton? I think we do. It could make a difference in this fight. Nowhere else for us to pick up resources. Not really too much we can scout. I guess we could go up to here. It's a bit of a wasted turn. But Todd doesn't really have too much else to do. Checking has no artifacts. We can scout this as well. But it's another zone. It's pretty irrelevant. I think we spend the moving points. Seeing what this leads to instead. So a few more resources. We're actually doing okay for crystal. But no actual reliable source. Okay, this fight is going to be unpleasant. If we go for... Mm, this is... Debatable, if this is worth it. But we might need the automaton. Okay, let's grab ourselves the spell. And even though these do give us extra speed, I think we need all the help we can get. So we're going to take the mechanic instead. Eight automatons. We're going to leave them in the middle in case they have to go forward. And... Well, actually... I think we can justify spreading the automatons out, just in case this fight does turn out to be pretty tough, which a horde of air elementals is not a fun fight, pretty much ever. 15 spell points. Let's go for it, and yep, as expected, they do start off with the storm elementals, which sucks. If we go for magic area 90 points of damage, we can do that three times. Also go for stone skin to protect the halflings, but I don't think we care too much about that. Frenzy now only costs us 12. Which means it could be a good option. Okay, this is also not ideal because this rock is in an awkward spot. Can we safely move through? I think we can. Okay, so this stack will wait. This stack, I think, also waits. So this this stack of 10 moves first. I think we do go for Magic Arrow. Kill three of those off. This stack waits. All three of these wait. They do go for the attack on those. No surprises there. These move up. And uh, actually, looking at it now, we can just send the Armadillo straight up. So we don't have to go around the rock. That's good. Can go for a full powered strike on this stack. So let's just do it. Uh, I guess there was an argument for going for the Storm Elementals, but it's fine. These move up. Those Storm Elementals move forward. Okay. So this stack will not activate Detonation. They're there to defend. We get one kill if we go for this, so I don't think we do that. I think we stay defensive. These move up. These should probably also defend. I'm not completely certain. But let's just go with that for now. 
then this stack will almost certainly be sacrificed. So do we just drop them off there? I think there's a chance that these go around us. I'm going to move up for the sake of potentially blocking these Storm Elementals next turn if they choose not to attack us. I should have moved between the two stacks, but this stack does move first. So if they do attack us, that should still be okay. We're going to activate Detonation on these. And we're just going to try and bait the Air Elementals there to attack us. Not sure if that will work. Next round begins. Do we wait or do we go defensive? I think we go defensive. Then we can rush forward, go for the block. Let's absolutely do that. Do we magic arrow first? Should ensure we can take a hit from these. Yeah, we will go forward. These could move up. It's pretty much guaranteed they'll explode at some point if we do. And they should damage at least two stacks. But we don't want to bait them towards us. We'd rather bait them backwards. So I think for that reason, we go towards the corner. Okay, they go for their spell. This stack will wait. They go for that. They actually blow us up with the first attack, which I kind of didn't expect. Ah, there we go. So we do get to attack three stacks at once. That's brilliant. Go for the attack on these. Send these forward. Three to four kills. Is that worth the risk? So because they can't get morale should be okay. We don't want to be attacked by the stack of nine. And we avoid those. Not really. So do we attack with the mechanics instead? Two to four damage on those, three to five with the armadillos. The armadillos, let's not get carried away. They are actually the stronger stack because they are a tier above. So these have come closer towards us. These, I think, just defend. We probably have to move these around. So these defend. Yeah, because the air elementals all get to move pretty soon. So we don't go for the attack. Focus on protecting the halflings. We might lose a few mechanics. Okay, so that first thing happens. This stack does get to move and does get to attack us. If we go out to attack those, actually nothing else can reach us if we do that. So we could go for an offense is the best defense type of approach. Advanced shield drops the damage we take by 30%. Slow also could be good, but probably not here. Do we shield or magic arrow? The shield lasts for seven rounds. This is the stack that's most threatened, perhaps. So yeah, we're going to shield. Get that defense for seven round. Go defensive. Three to nine kills if we go for this. Let's just do it. And then these can hopefully finish them off. Okay, we're probably going to take even more losses to the mechanics. The point was that the mechanics would protect the automatons and revive those, but unfortunately we can't really keep the mechanics themselves safe. These go defensive. Stack of seven moves next. They can reach us. If we go down to there, I don't think it makes a difference. Yeah, we don't want them going around the rock. So these defend. Just have to take the hit, which we do. So six of those left, I think we wait. They go for the automatons, no losses to those so far, lose one armadillo to that. Strongest stack is this one, so we do actually kill those off. Two to three kills on these, let's do it, and then one kill on these. All things considered, not too terrible. Go for wisdom, and is it arrogant to think we're already ready to take on the gantry? I don't think it is, just because this is a situation automatons shine in. Have to be careful because we need to make sure the Dreadnoughts move every round. If they don't move every round, they can go for the Heat Beam, which means we don't retaliate. Although actually, that's still fine. We still blow up on them. Retaliation is not the point. I've spent all of my spell points, but uh, it's three, so it's 600. What was I thinking before? 600 hit points. Okay, so 70 times 4. Are we close enough to take the automaton? 70 times 4. The thing is, the heat beam can damage all three of our stacks at once. As in, if we block the halflings with the mechanics and the armadillos, they can just walk right up, and they will have one turn where they have to choose one stack to attack. And the halflings are safe for that round. The round afterwards, if we don't move around, 
They could heat beam all three. But that's fine. We can deal with that when it comes. We should protect our extra automaton. So four of these, they're going to deal 280 damage. Which is less than half of the damage we need to deal in total. I hope this isn't a mistake. Okay, we at least are expected to win. That's great. So, first thing we do is we just send these right in. Let them go boom. Then these, I think, wait just out of range. So, being mechanical, pretty sure they can't get morale. So we activate detonation on these as well. We might as well wait with all of these stacks. So we're going to activate detonation on all of them. And we're just going to feed them in one at a time. And that is a situation this unit definitely shines in. Okay, they go for this. They take the boom. So they are down 75 hit points as expected. These will move up for the block for now. Uh, we actually want to bring the dreadnought slightly closer. That was a mistake, perhaps. To not bring them into range. Need to make sure we don't do that again. But for this round, we have no choice but to attack. These go for the block. Okay, so we need to be within 10 range, so we can afford them to take 1, 2, 3. They can take 3 steps closer. So 1, 2, 3. We move to here. Does that put them in range? I'm not sure it does, but we will find out. If I work that out correctly, they still can't reach us even after killing off the automaton. I think that's correct. Okay, let's just move these to the middle. Okay, next round begins. This stack waits. This stack waits. This stack waits. These come in. Automaton goes boom, we do some more damage, first one goes down, these defend, these are now in range, perfect. These defend. These move in. Let's check they can't reach us, they actually can. Okay, so let's not make a mistake with that. Let's get out of their way. Okay, now this stack waits. This stack waits. They go for the heat beam, but we still go for the boom. And they are down to 211 hit points. We have 7 speed on these, 5 speed on these. No point playing around with that. I'm still going to wait. Go for this attack. These defend. Yeah, these just defend. Then, do we actually send these in? 95 hit points to go. I kind of think we don't. Is that going to be a mistake? I, I don't think so. Well... So what's going to happen is these don't get involved, these guys move closer, we can then attack with these if we want to. We can attack with the halflings. I think what ultimately happens is we either take a hit to the armadillos or the mechanics, or we just send in the automaton instead. So if we take a hit to the mechanics, these guys do, let's have a look, so they have 19 attack, we have 10 defense. They do 40 to 50 damage. If they hit the mechanics, they're going to have 9, nine attack over our defense, so it's going to be significantly more than 40 to 50 damage. I think we play it safe. Send these in. That guarantees that these are the last loss we take. And then halflings and just finish them off. So, dreadnoughts go down. We can pick up our first dreadnought if we want to. No need to do that yet. Do we take on the horde of, uh, I hate saying this word on YouTube because I don't trust the auto caption to not think my video is about something else. Uh, the men of the sea. Do we take them on now? Do we wait till next round? Do we go down to the harpy hags? Could definitely take on the Black Tower, that should be fine. I really don't want to take on those automatons, I feel like that's still a trap. 
All of crew mates, however, would be worth doing. We can actually go towards the watchtower. Celestial necklace. I can't quite tell what those units are. I think there's a chance. I think they're inferno units. I can't tell what they are, though. Hit lords, perhaps. I guess we just carry on. Do we take our automaton back before we move on? We could do it if we take on the... the fight there. So these of course are upgraded tier 2 units so we shouldn't get carried away. If we start going back towards the town it doesn't really help us. Can't see any sign of a well to get our spell points back. I think we break through. But I think we accept the potential loss of an automaton. Yep. I'm going to go into this fight willing to lose an automaton. Maybe we don't need to. Okay, we're going to activate the detonation and we're going to move down. If they get morale, we lose that unit for sure. But let's hope they don't. So three stacks at least do take the bait. Stack of 18 goes up to defend. Stack of one can hopefully defend next. So these are six speed, we are five speed, so there's not really too much we can do to protect ourselves from that top stack, which has waited. Armadillos will keep the other three stacks busy. These actually do come towards us, which does kind of surprise me. They can reach the two stacks of armadillos, so we potentially take a loss to those, but that's fine. No, nope, there are only two left, so we're good. Okay, so there's a chance that if they do get morale, they blow up our automaton and we kill our own armadillo, but that's fine. Should take the hit from those, completely fine. These guys will wait. No morale, that's good. This stack waits. This stack moves out of the way. These go back as a block. These defend. These kill these off. And then we go for this. Okay, question now is, have we put the automatons in harm's way? Can we do anything about that? Maybe we just sack the automaton here. Because, yeah, we can't move them out of range. If we go defensive, stack of 14 can reach us. That's going to do 3 to 4 damage each. 30 hit points on this. Yeah, it's, it's not really going to work. Just got to accept the loss. There we go. Do some damage to these. Armadillo does go down. They do get morale, but there's another armadillo in the way. Okay, three to six kills if we go for this. That's probably fine. Maybe wasn't actually the right thing to do. Nope, we don't take any extra losses. Okay, so two armadillos, one automaton. That's worth it to break through this. And then, yeah, let's let's resist the temptation to go for that fight. End the turn there. Next turn begins. Can now go for another loan, which we probably need. I would like to get the City Hall because it's approaching the end of week two. And our income is really poor. And can't just assume that more gold is going to show up. On the other hand... If we go Catacombs this turn into Serpentarium, that gets us extra Kratos next week, but I don't see where that gold is going to come from. If we get the loan right now, we can go for the Catacombs this turn. Serpentarium can then be done if we can find 5,000 gold just lying around. We should probably scout this out. See if there's a better source of gold. There is the black tower there, but we can't get over the bone for some reason. Must be a very large animal. Not be able to climb over it. Okay, let's just see what we can find. These are not relevant resources for us. It is indeed pit lords. Ghost dragons there. Okay, this is an interesting place to go, but... We can't take that fight. We can't take that fight. We can squeeze through. Horde of Dendroid Soldiers, we also can't take that fight. So there's loads of resources we can pick up, but maybe not the right ones. If Rathmont goes for the Black Tower, we could also go for these two, probably within the same turn, but that's not going to be enough. We're not going to get 5,000 gold from that, so what else could we do on day 7? We could get the Citadel. That should still be doable. 
So that gives us a lot of extra growth. No tier 7 units this turn. It is Horn of the Abyss, which means the Gantry should continue to stock up Dreadnoughts. We don't have to buy them this week. So yeah, I guess... I guess we just go for this. Get an extra spell as well, which is always good. Okay, so perhaps instead of going straight in for the Catacombs, we're better off going for Citadel first, which is more immediately useful, just in case something goes wrong. Not getting Citadel by the end of the week is... I mean, not getting Catacombs by the end of the week is fine. Let's check which hero we're going to be missing out on. It's Terek. Yeah, fine with that. Citadel. Rathmont goes for this. So those things come straight forward. Already in range, let's just go for the attack. Try and save our mechanics. And armadillos should be able to take at least one hit. And kill these off, so that's great. Okay, they finish us off, and I'm pretty sure they've kept themselves out of range. Yes, they have. And we can't really protect our armadillos too much. But we do get luck, so we do a nice chunk of damage to them regardless. I think we go forward. Does it matter? It doesn't matter. Yep, so we kill those off. Get the Frostring spell, which is not too bad. Black Tower, I think we can probably take it. Depends what we find. Uh, we can see a Pandora's box there. And we can scooch around the Dendroid Soldiers. Okay, now Todd goes for this. 600 gold, even more crystal, that's great. Don't think we can possibly get enough gold. Okay, for now, leave Rathmont with the fastest creatures we can. I guess we just pick up some spells. Get as close as we can. To... I mean, I guess this is the best spot. End the turn. No sign of movement. Okay, let's give the units back. Okay, so lots of sprites shouldn't need to take any losses. Well, we might take a few. They start off in one big stack. They have chosen to wait. Sixteen left. Okay, stack of 14 is exposed. I still don't think we go for a spell. Do we bait them in? So if we walk to this position here, can they still reach the stack of 14? Well, they're never going to kill two off, so I think we just defend. They do go for just the one. Finish them off. Okay. Just the one loss, that's fine. Uh, expert Earth Magic, yes. Definitely, that could help us. Save our movement points on our main hero. We're going to pick this up with Todd and Rathmon. Let's find out what it is. Gold Dragon. That could be bad. Could our other stacks take that thing out? So what spell can we go for? Mass Stone Skin, Mass Shield. The thing is, I can't remember if Gold Dragon's starting in the center and reach Halfling's first turn. I think they can. This guy has tactics. I think Todd's actually the right choice. So, he can have the units back, along with all this stuff. And he has 26 spell points. Not great options. Okay. Let's see what happens. Oh, wow, what? Really? Okay, so they can reach everyone. Uh, I might have made a mistake. Okay, well, one thing we can say for sure is we do not want our halflings exposed. Hmm. Okay, stack of one goes there. Let's block everything with one stacks for now. 
Just check they can't attack through this. So they can attack through this, but they only kill off two of these. This I can see how this is a mistake. I can see how this might be. We don't want them to be able to attack the mechanics. So these move up. And then yeah, there's, there's not too much we can do. I really hope this isn't a mistake. So let's just think about this. So they can attack through these, they can attack through these. They can double attack this armadillo stack, perhaps. Can they? I always get confused by this. So the breath attack, there's some kind of glitch or bug involving the breath attack where you can mess them around a bit. I think our safest option is these are five speed, so they can they can pretty much get anywhere they want to. I think we put them round. Make sure they're not a target for the breath attack. Or if they are, it keeps our halflings safe in the process. So the gold dragons can't land in that hex, that empty hex. Something tells me this is as good as it gets. So they do actually go for the armadillo stack. Ah, but they get morale first turn, which might explain why this was not meant to go in our favor. Now, do we absorb the retaliation, or... I don't think we do. I think... Do we cure or shield? Shield probably doesn't do much. 15%, it's, it's probably the best thing we can do. Go for this. Decent chunk of damage, not that much. These go... Yeah, I think these go defensive. I think we go defensive. Fully. Next round begins. Actually only take two losses there, so that's really promising. Let's see, 58 hit points. Can we do 58 damage? Or do we just defend one more turn? We can cure. Try and keep those losses down to two. I feel like one thing about this faction and the community's reaction to it is armadillos seem to get made fun of a lot. Okay, they do take the two kills there. Armadillos get made fun of a lot, but I honestly think these units are really useful. So 10 losses, 3,500 gold, was that even worth it? We don't have an artifact in that slot yet, so we will take it. It does bring us up to 5,000 gold, which is not putting us on track for the Serpentarium. Could get the castle instead of the catacombs. Or even the watchtower. That's always interesting. So if we go for the watchtower, we will get two gunslingers this week, three more next week, five gunslingers total. Very good range units, very good at taking on rival range units. I don't see a fight that we can take that's their specialty. So there's no immediate need for those. It would be helpful to know what's through here. Okay, Sears Hut, there's a prison there. Warlock's Lab is a very powerful map object. See what's guarding this. Titan's Gladius. It must be a really strong guard. Lots of strong guards in this zone. I'm kind of surprised. I feel like we've broken through to a new zone because the guards are so much stronger. So what I really want is gold, I think. Although, there's no way we get enough gold for the Serpentarium. If we could find a marketplace, I'd go for that, but the odds are so low. We can see fights with Lizardmen there. Gunslingers would be good there. Okay, this keeps going. Alright, so Todd is going to give everything back, and Rathmon will go for this fight next. So this one is the Harpy Hags. I think the last one was as well. Unfortunately, they are in lots of stacks. Let's go for a block. These do as well. Okay, no point trying to bait them. We want to bring them as close as we can. Make sure they're all in range of the halflings. Please go defensive. Please kill these off. Now they all move down to bully the armadillo. But he takes the first shot like a champ. Second shot, he does go down. Then they can actually reach these two stacks, which is unfortunate and none of them are in range, but we get 3 to 8 kills per shot, so that's not too bad. Uh, this stack of 7 hasn't moved. 
So let's just go for those. We take them out. Please defend. Can we get out of range? Looks like we can. I think. Although, really don't want these moving twice, but they won't. They'd have to wait first. So yeah, this stack... Nah, there's no protecting this stack, so actually... These defend, and these just go back to where they were. And we will take a hit, but that's fine. We do survive. This stack waits. I think we try and kill these off. So they now come slightly closer, and they're probably going to get a couple of kills. Yep. But halflings are still safe. We do survive that one. Okay, so we might have to go forward. Can they reach us? Looks like they can't. So I'm going to send these down. Take the fight. Send these down too. They're going to go for those. We do take the hit completely fine. They go for the stack of three. Okay, this stack goes for those. These go forward. These have 10 hit points left. They should, I think, be okay. 15 hit points left on these, 25 on these. We do get a kill if we go for this, let's just do it. Don't have to worry too much about the retaliation. Yeah, 22 hit points should be fine on that stack. Do we want to be hit by three of these? I think we move these away. Armadillos once again proving their worth, taking the hit pretty well. And we can maybe kill these off. Yep, so just the three losses, that's probably worth it. Uh, Todd... We'll come through, take the slower units, and we'll grab what we can, which is not too much this turn. Okay, so this campfire is not going to make a difference in terms of what we can purchase. Could make a difference in terms of whether we get Terek. I don't think we do, though. Uh, City Hall on day 7 is a bad choice. Watchtower versus Castle versus Catacombs. If we go for the Castle, that gets us extra automatons, extra halflings, really useful. I feel like we go for Watchtower, though. Then we can get the Gantry next week, pretty much guaranteed. Skip the Serpentarium for now. We get the plus one growth on the Gantry, that sets us up really well for almost the rest of the game. I do like Watchtower here. Castle moves us towards the capital too, and I'm not one of these people who thinks the capital is never worth going for. I think on single player, big single player map like this, it can be worth going for. Better to steal it from an opponent, but and I wouldn't rule it out. Okay. Let's go Watchtower. Get those Gunslingers, get them growing. And I think if we go west with Rathmon, that opens up a space for Todd to go through and grab this. Then where does Rathmon go next? We can't get our spell points back. There's no well. We'd have to waste a turn in the town to get our spell points back. Don't think I care to do that. Probably don't care to take these on. If we go for the Earth Elementals, we can start pushing through this zone, which is actually probably quite doable. And I don't see too much in this direction that I feel particularly ready or willing to go for. In any case, we don't stay where we are now. We go west. End the turn there. Week of the Tortoise. That's going to have no impact. Probably want to go for City Hall pretty soon. We've got Tancred, who is another not particularly great backup hero choice. Uh, Crag Hack could be interesting if we need more than one good hero. Todd is going to grab this stuff. And then do we go straight west with Rathmont? Do we try and take the fight with the Earth Elementals? I think 50 of those. Probably a bit much. We're not ready for that. Okay, first thing is I want to see what this leads to. So, Library of Enlightenment. Artifact there, no. A shrub. That really looks like an artifact to me. Okay, so we got Mighty Gorgons there, that's not actually such a bad fight. A uh, pack of Pit Lords, not so bad either. I'll pull back.
Do we need our units back this turn? Probably not. Do we go towards this? But also, of course, grab the gantry. Get those two dreadnoughts. Definitely not ready for the automatons. So what do we have available? We have 22 halflings. Not actually that much. Could, of course, get more from Tancred. Probably the smarter financial decision. Okay, so if Rathmont goes up in this direction, what are the first fights we can take? We definitely can't take this fight. We don't want to take any of these fights. The Lizard Men should be doable. Horde of Pit Lords, absolutely no way. Horde of Crewmates is probably doable now. See, I'm not going to be too precious about the moving points. Let's go for that fight. Running low on armadillos. Okay, I feel like we should build this turn. So armadillos, numbers are low. Could maybe start upgrading some of this type of thing. Uh, I think saving for the catacombs would be good. Can't get a new loan from the bank just yet. Uh, upgraded halfling adobe is too difficult logistically. I feel like upgraded ranch could be justified. We should probably build something this turn. We have 12 potential bellwether armadillos to recruit. They have 6 speed, that's the main difference. 2 extra speed, which wouldn't be too bad. It's quite useful. Upgraded manufactory is much more expensive in terms of gold. Upgraded foundry... ...is maybe better. But I don't really want to take these mechanics off of Rathmont. Also, of course, prioritize the Dreadnoughts. Dreadnoughts into City Hall, perhaps. Okay, there are a lot of those. We do at least have the Mass Slow, which lasts for 8 rounds. That pretty much gets us the win. Uh, the problem is, I think we're going to want those... I want those spell points. Something else. So that stack rushes forward. If we move up, they still can't reach us. Just check I'm right about that. I think I am. Yep. Okay, these will go up to this spot. Should also be safe. These go for this block. The rest of them come forward. Full power shot on these. 7 to 19 kills. That's plenty. Now I think we step back with these. Let me wait. Okay, I'll let them come closer. Stack the closest stack. These can safely kill these off. Then go back. So we could try and bait them if we want to, but we've chosen not to spend a turn waiting, which means we can't drag them to the corner. So I think the best thing we can do is pull them up towards us. Whittle down the strongest stacks we can. Move these up for the block. They do get morale with one stack. They choose to go for the armadillos, not too surprising. I think we carry on as we are. This stack waits. This stack... Going to attempt to move away. Go for the attack on this. Stack of 19 does get morale, so that really sucks. We take quite a few losses there. That was the worst possible stack to get morale. I don't think we absorb retaliation. <laughs> we do go for the friendly fire there, whoops. It's fine. Okay, so tempting to go for this, but we definitely don't. Again, we don't go for the temptation. These will take a step away, does that make sense? Yeah, we don't want these getting attacked. Then we go for this, of course. Do take a little bit more damage, 8 hit points left on that. These go for a block of sorts, these defend. Kill these off, these defend. Kill this deck off. Okay, a few more losses than I expected, but that's still fine. 
We don't need the precious resources this turn, so we're just going to push ahead. Yeah, I'm still not sure whether to spend the resources on dwelling upgrades. I think you could argue it either way. We are running super low on the armadillos, so I feel like getting a few bellwether armadillos... Maybe I'm getting carried away with my like of armadillos, but a thousand gold's not going to be missed. I probably should have gone for the boundary upgrade instead. Okay, is there anything else we can learn about this zone? We can go to the east, so yes. Hopefully actually grab something for free. Leads to another zone. Like a f hit fiends. Should probably get through that. Especially once we pick up some units from here. Okay, so City Hall. How far away are we from this? I've not been keeping track. City Hall we do want pretty soon because, yeah, the income is a problem. Uh, I do want the Gunslingers, but they are going to cost us way too much. And then I also want the Dreadnoughts, but again, that's going to cost us too much. So what fights can we take more soon? Pack of Mighty Gorgons we probably can take pretty soon. Do we just go for the Dreadnoughts instead? Definitely not against Mighty Gorgons. If that is the first fight we go for, we'd rather have other types of units. So if we save for a turn, we get Tancred and we buy the Gunslingers. There's also the debate about whether we build another building this turn. Yeah, I feel like if we go north, that's not actually that fruitful. I guess if we slow the Mighty Gorgons, that's fairly safe. But then which fight do we take next? We can't take that fight. That's another shrub. We don't know what's to the west. Could be something. But outside of that, there's not really too much up here. So this might be a mistaken choice of direction. There is the watchtower there for extra production, but yeah, we're just not not even close to strong enough for that. Uh, I know I definitely do want Tancred, and Tancred actually probably pays for himself in terms of units. So actually, Todd should probably come up in this direction and prepare himself to form a chain. Or do we pick up the resources? Yeah, we really need that gold, and I think I'm putting off the City Hall for too long. We can reach that next turn. That's not too bad. It's a bit of a boost of gold. If we go south and scout, that might be fruitless. So I think we move towards the guaranteed result, even if it's not a particularly good prize, it's probably the best we can do. And I think, unfortunately, we have to save our gold. Yep. Can we do this yet? Nope. Okay. Gonna move back. Yeah, it's a somewhat slow start. I think I should make it my goal to get the gantry. End of the week. So, 2,200. We still can't go for this. So, to get Tancred, we'd need to trade. If we did get Tancred, we get a lot of extra units. I'd be tempted to just say we do that. It's not going to be cheap, but I think the immediate power spike is hard to turn down. I'll trade four of these. We'll trade a few gems. I guess Sulfur is the one we get from the Prospector, so we can somewhat rely on getting more of that. Okay, then we get Tancred, and Tancred gets us those 24 extra gremlins, which is, or not gremlins, um, halflings, similar unit. Uh, expert archery, that's not bad. Okay, now Todd, can Todd actually pass these units across? I'm not sure he can. Nope. Do we just go for it? I think if we just accept the use of mass slow, we can justify this. Oh, that might be a mistake. We'll see. So, slow is going to last for eight rounds. We should just go for it. Then we can't go for anything else. We could go for shield and stone skin. Instead of one slow. But then, none of our stacks are that good other than the halflings. So, the key thing is 
just to maximize damage with the halflings. Okay, we move these up. These go forward as bait. These wait. These go up to defend. These will also be defensive. I'll let the Gorgons do their thing. They do get morale, which is really unfortunate. I was hoping to bait them towards the bottom of the map. Okay, we can at least go for a full powered shot on a first stack, which we do. Uh, we don't quite kill them off though. Okay, what do we need to do? I think we go down. And... We just want to pull these towards us. But in a careful way. This time round we wait. With all of our stacks. Okay, so the bait is mostly being taken. Yep, that is working. Okay, these are now in range. Have to be careful. Take a step back. Go for this attack. Please defend. These start to move through. And we're going to try and pull them back. Next round begins. This stack waits. This stack goes to here. This stack... We want to drag in as many stacks as possible, so I think here is best. Then we kill off that stack, that's good. And I think we have successfully baited all of them, so that's perfect. Nope. I shouldn't have said that. Okay, that's fine. We can afford to drag in one stack. That's not a big deal. Now it's hard to keep these safe. I think we let this one go. This one drags them to the corner. Please go for this. We don't quite kill them off. They have nine hit points left. This stack defends. This stack will try to stop them reaching the mechanics. Okay, we do bait in the one stack of two. Manage to take the hit from the mighty Gorgons, and we can then kill them off. Then I think we wait. Looks like we can't stay safe from this stack. But we can maybe take a hit from one. So we move down. Please wait. Please defend. Uh, we don't take the hit from one, but we do drag them away. These move up. And then we go for this. Zero to one kills. They have 22 hit points. 16 to 32 kills. We will take our chances. Okay, new round begins. Do we try to bait them towards us? I think we have quite a lot of control if we go to this hex. Then we wait. They scooch slightly closer. How many more slow rounds have we got? Three. That should be enough. So the artifacts we've taken are making a big difference in this fight. Uh, we could try and go for a kill, but better off moving away. So when these guys get their speed back, they're up to six speed, so mechanics still faster. Go for the strongest stack we can. We actually finish those off. These come closer. They don't bunch up, unfortunately, but we finish off the other stack for sure. We actually don't finish off that stack, which does surprise me. We go for these, and yeah, that loss of that last mechanic was unfortunate. Pretty sure, yeah, we do get a kill here. Four losses in total, not bad considering the game thought we would lose. Uh, we will go for the treasure chest before the end of the turn, which gets us 2,000 gold we could definitely make use of. Do we just save up for the City Hall? If we go for the loan, which I think probably becomes available again next turn, that should get us the City Hall next turn, which is a reason to not go for the any kind of upgrade this turn. Gantry, we've still got many more days to go for that, so the goal is to get that before the end of the week. We're just going to end the turn there. So we can see Blue has a somewhat competent hero who is 
on the prowl. Let's see what they are. So it's Sanya. I think Sanya might be their main. Doesn't look too bad. Okay, so Victoria will grab all of this stuff and hopefully still have enough moving points to scout a bit. Okay. Wow. A horde of Kuratos guarding three Pandora's boxes. And there is the Serpentarium I would love to have. And I could take it too, but it's effectively blocked by the Kuratos, which we, we are just not strong enough for that. That's a real shame. Could we get in the other way? We have to take on a pack of Ghost Dragons, which is not too fun either. Okay, so Rathmon can take some extra units this turn, if he wants. Would we go for the Ogre Magi for the Tome of Water Magic? I don't think we would. We can go up towards the Pit Fiends, try and break through to a new zone. It's very aggressive, but the thing is, I don't see much to do in any other direction. We can indeed go for the next loan, so we go for that and we can now get the City Hall which will give us an extra 1000 gold per day, effectively offsetting the repayment completely. So that is something very good that Factory can do. Okay, so I think we move Todd upwards as much as I'd like to scout, I think we do that with Tancred and we should really do that first I guess. So these resources can wait. Actually, we should be able to explore next turn either way, so let's go for them. Todd moves up. Come through with Rathmont. Can't quite reach. I'm going to go slightly west with Victoria to scout. Uh, we're going to take the fastest units we can. I'm a little bit paranoid that someone could break through the zone, so I'm going to spread them out. Move this way. End the turn there. It's still just blue for now. Okay, so do you want to take the fight with a pack of Pit Fiends? We will have a lot of extra units. Still not that many, but hopefully enough for that fight. Okay, so the... Yeah, the Lizardmen aren't guarding any resources. That's a strong guard. Just for a badge of courage. Wow. So that wasn't... We did indeed go in the right direction, is the, the conclusion to draw from that. Okay, so 14 mechanics, 106 halflings, 6 armadillos, which we spread out. We have 5 spell points, which is enough to go for slow. Uh, I'm hoping this zone is completely safe. I can see guards still intact. Victory is expected. These are not pit lords, which means they won't bring it demons back, which is great. Do we go for the slow here? They are pretty fast, six speed, so let's have a look. I'm going to temporarily put the grid back on just to actually count this. So they have six speed. So they move to there and then they go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so there's a dilemma. If we don't move these to here, these shouldn't reach us on turn two, but if they get morale, they do, and they do some real damage. But then again, we should shoot them this turn. So I think we wait. They don't get morale. And we have a workable block here. I'm going to try and save my spell points. Yeah, this stack of two should be fine. Do we try and block? So we can do a block here that actually neither of them can reach us. That holds them in place. This guy waits, this guy moves back. He defends. These defend too. We take the hit from that stack, completely fine. This stack waits. These stacks all can't reach us unless they get morale, which they don't. Strongest stack is this one, at least the closest of the strong stacks. These move up. Hmm, maybe shouldn't have done that. It's fine. 
it's fine because these move down and these move up. And these, I guess, also move up. I think that makes sense. Please kill these off. Okay, so first of the armadillos goes down there. Second armadillo goes down. These seem to move first, not that it makes a difference once they're down to one stack. Okay, so these can reach. Do we therefore go in and take a hit? We will take a loss if we do. I think we're guaranteed to lose one more armadillo, no matter what. So... And... The question is, could these kill these off so they will deal about three damage each? It's going to be borderline. I think the key thing is, we want to make sure they can't reach us, so one, two, three, four, five, six, they can actually reach us. If we step out. Is there some way we could slow them down? I think maybe there is. Yeah, perhaps if these go here, then they have to go one, two, three, four, five, six. They then can't reach us. So you guys step forward. We can still reach with these. What am I thinking? Zero to one kills. <laughs> I thought I'd have to kill one off. That doesn't make sense. Oh, and that's bad too because I've exposed these. Although, like I said, unless they get morale, which would be really bad, their only real option is to kill off an armadillo. Hopefully not two. So I think we got to try and move these away. They do go for that. They do kill off one armadillo, but that's it. This stack waits. This stack attacks. We kill them off. Okay, three armadillo losses. That's fine. Armadillos, they're such a good meat shield unit. They're still really helping us, and this feels like a bit of a dead end. Don't want to take on Archangels. Pack of Diamond Golems probably could be done. Don't really want to take on Beholders. This is unfortunate, because I'm not sure this is really that worthwhile. Okay, we will go for this, and we'll move these up. These two wait. These are in range. Do get morale. It's gonna wait again. In fact, we didn't wait the first time, but never mind. Okay, these go up for the block. They can't reach us, they can't get morale. Kill these off. Couple of steps forward. Okay, absolutely all of the stacks fall for the bait. Hopefully one of them will put themselves in range. This one does. And we can just pull back. The thing is, I don't really want to spend a thousand gold on the stat boost. But maybe it makes sense, because that's a stat boost we're not going to get any other way. Can we take a hit from these? We can. 13 attack, we have 10 defense. Actually, we can't. That's somewhat annoying. But this is the stack to move, so we move these two out of range, we should be fine. Okay, we kill these off. These defend. Ah, we can't escape. I think we just try and defend, although in fact, because this stack moves first, yeah, we do take a hit there. We can kill these off at least. Go for this. Okay, the one loss, that's not too bad. Uh, I guess the campfire there might pay for the School of Magic. We should definitely go for this first, which does take us pretty close to 2,000. So we need to find in the next two turns 15,000 gold or 13,000 if we go for catacombs into Serpentarium. How would that work? 13,000 
lots of beholders. We probably have to go for that fight, but it's... It's really not a nice fight to take. It's too late to set up a hero chain. There's no... No other easy pickings. Plus, a hero chain doesn't really help us because we want to save gold. Okay, going to move Victoria down. Uh, going to... Probably keep Todd fairly close. We go back to the town. What can we build? What is worth building? We probably don't want to spend at all. If we have to, if we really can't afford either of these by the end of the week, then going for the castle is an okay way to end the week. Of course, I'd much rather have the gantry. Gantry is going to be super timely if we can get it this week. But yeah, this is going to be like a couple of thousand gold. We definitely shouldn't go for the School of Magic, but then again, where else can we get gold? Burn Dragons don't lead to it, plus we can't take the fight. Pit Lords, we could probably win that fight, but we need a few more units. But yeah, unfortunately gold is becoming harder to come by. If we go with Tancred, well there's more to explore with him. That's worth bearing in mind. Todd doesn't have too much to do. I think we just move down. And yeah, we've got to resist spending. Okay, let's hope for a few more resources. This does not look promising. A bit of a weird shape to it. Really weird. And it leads to nothing. Okay, that's disappointing. Alright, so 3,400. We will not get our loan back before the end of the week. We could go Catacombs and Castle. That's probably the best thing we can guarantee. Uh, I guess the Medusa stores. How fast are those? Is this a mistake? Is there anything more I can do? So I can go for like one spell? I can't remember how many of these you get. Well... No. I don't think that ends well. If we had more spell points, maybe. This isn't really a great fight either. Yeah, I think the best we can do is probably... Catacombs Day 6, Castle Day 7. That should be within reach. And then yeah, no tier 6, no tier 7 units until week 4, but that just shows the importance of economy. It's still good, it still stocks up units, it gives us a few extra sandworms and a few extra other units, uh, like bounty hunters for example that we wouldn't have otherwise had. Uh, gantry is just a complete no-go. Just gotta accept the, accept the economic reality. So we go for that. Uh, Rathmon, do we just leave this behind? So we are going to want 5,000 next turn for sure. We probably do want to go for this. We want this stack in the center. We'll try this. Okay, so... Predictably not very nice. Do we go for stone skin for plus 6 defense? Plus 6 defense for the entire battle. Versus... 110 damage. First round. Protect ourselves from the evil eyes. Did they wait? I'm surprised. AI normally goes straight for the attack. Though we could at least take a chunk out of those. In any case, we definitely go forward with all of these stacks. That much, we know. No sign of morale. Okay, a choice needs to be made. This stack is about to attack our halflings, but... Evil Eyes will attack us regardless. I think we have to stone skin to reduce the losses to the halflings, but we still take quite a few losses, I'm pretty sure. Ah, they get morale too. That was not good. Okay, let's go for these next. Not sure how worthwhile this is, but it, it could be the difference between getting the castle and not getting the castle. Wrong stat gets morale, although we could hope for morale this round. Just rush forward, hope for the best. Odds are not in our favour. 
gonna be a lot of blusses. Okay, they actually go for those. Let's go for this stack next before it moves. At this point, we do not want to attack directly. These block these in. These get to move next. So there's still this stack of nine left to move, but they will attack a one stack. Then there's the stack of five, which is about to move, which is this one. So let's weaken those. They go for that, but we can then finish them off. These, I think, go defensive. We can probably kill this stack off. It's in our favor. But can these reach us? Yeah, I think we move back. Okay, so these guys fortunately do survive that round, so do we sacrifice them to waste the turn of the One Beholder? The stack of nine there moves next. They can't kill off the armadillos yet. Stack of one will probably choose to kill us off. I don't know if it makes too much difference. I'm just going to move to there to get morale. Okay, just going to defend. Then we wait. So I think what I fear is these four killing these off and the nine attacks us. But let's see what we can do. So the nine is yet to move. I'm just going to go for those. Keep it simple. These move down, and we can at least waste that one turn. If these go forward, they will not get a kill, but that's still the best thing we can do. Take a few more losses to these. Nine is about to move. They can reach us, which frees up the rest. But that's fine. Go defensive. Okay, they do still manage to kill us off. This deck has not yet moved, so let's go for them. We can kill these off, also block off the stack of four. Then these do get to move. Just got to go for the strongest stack we can. They do attack us. Stone skin probably still helping us. Shouldn't attack. Okay, so these do move next. We can kill one off. Pretty much guaranteed to take the next loss regardless, let's just go for this. Kill these. Might take an extra loss to the halfling for that. Looks like we don't. Got enough hit points to tank one more attack. Two more in fact, kill these off. Quite heavy losses. But... Going into day seven. In a pretty good place there. Todd can move up, pick up this stuff next round. How far can this guy go? Not too much further. Okay, so Rathmon, do we go for this? Should we go for this? So we're going to have... Going into next turn, we're going to have 1900 if we do nothing. Prospector I don't think can be reached by anyone. So 1900 if we do nothing, then we pick up all of this stuff. We're going to need all the gold we can get, so it's got to come through. Grab the slower units. Victoria doesn't have too much she can explore. She's got to be the one who comes back. Gantry, at least there, will be up to three Dreadnoughts by next week, which is still pretty good. End the turn there. I would like to know a bit more about my opponent, so Blue has now gone underground. There's not really too much I can learn from one tavern. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well it's day seven. We are able to build the castle this turn, I believe. Let's at least find that one out before we end the episode. So let's send Todd up to here. Please tell me he can reach. I think he can't reach. Okay, that's a uh, classic blunder. Alright, 
Um, I'm not sure this gold makes that much difference, and he can't reach either. Okay, I've, I've screwed myself over trying to be clever with the movement points. Still can't go for this. If we trade nearly all of our resources, we can probably go for the castle. I'm not sure that makes sense. Might have to accept that we don't get the castle this turn. Unless we go for this and just wing it, but no, there's no way. We're even weaker than before. So we've got to start coming back with Rathmon. I think we try to build our economy up more seriously next week. If we did go for this, at best it would be worth a thousand, so we'd still have to trade for 1,600, which is not really a great situation to be in. Perhaps upgrading the Halfling Adobe might be a better choice. That way we can come back, get a stronger stack of Halflings. If we were to upgrade the Watchtower instead, we'd have to trade a bit for that, but that's okay. Then we can get a pretty strong stack of Bounty Hunters. We could also go for Crag Hack. He can loop round, grab this. And then he can chain some units up, but we don't have enough gold to make much happen with that. Okay, let's bring Tancred back. Let's at least see what this is. Victoria is pretty much going to be forced to come back. She cannot reach this this turn, but I think we just let Craghack go because our economy is not really good enough. No other easy source of gold, so just going to move up to this. Yeah, it sucks to have day 7 and to not be able to do anything that great with it. But yeah, I think Castle probably wasn't happening either way unless we completely gut our economy. I don't want to trade Crystal away. Um, don't really want to trade too much Sulphur. So yeah, I think we just accept that we will get slightly lower unit growth next week. I think we decide which units to build on the basis of which fights we're likely to take next. So perhaps Earth Elementals, but what we really need is a spike to our gold. So if we go Earth Elementals into Gold Golems, that's a nice little chunk. But it's not really going to change things too much. We can grab a little bit of gold here. Remember that, that by not getting the gold this turn, we will have a bit more to spend at the start of next week. We probably do want to take Creature Banks, but this one is not a good option. Uh, we can't go for this for sure. Not too many Creature Banks we can go for, so yeah, I think our best option really is to break into a new zone. This zone is extremely disappointing. I'm sure there is a lot more if you get through the Archangels, but that's really unfortunate placement. So this has been slightly fruitless. We could take the Pit Lords. I'm pretty sure we could do that with next week's units. But, is that the best thing we can do? And can we set up a chain that works for that? Probably not, because Victoria's already moved. So yeah, I think we start coming back. And I think, given that our next fight is going to be against Earth Elementals, and we do want to build every turn, but yeah, we definitely want strong range units for that fight. So I think upgrading the Halfling Adobe, we already have a good stack of those. These things will ignore 20% of the opponent's defense. That seems like a good way to power through these. If we can end a turn with Rathmont in the town, we can get our spell points back. At this point, we'll have uh, 100 spell points. So that's probably worth doing if the movement points work out. But yeah, it's good to at least have the gantry. That's the key thing we did in this episode. We have got ourselves going. Hopefully by the end of month one, we will be able to produce quite a lot of dreadnoughts. Anyway, that's going to be all for now. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Do check the playlist link in the description for all further episodes, and I'll see you next time.